Good morning. Yesterday, we talked about Joni Erickson Tata. We talked about a lady who jumped into a lake, broke her neck, and her life changed. We talked about the fact that she was able to say, God allows what God allows what he hates to accomplish what he loves. I want you to think about that statement for just a minute. God hates divorce. God hates violence when it's perpe perpetrated against people. God hates it when innocent kids are in some way violently treated. God hates all that. He hates it when our own sins bring us pain and the fallenness of the world brings us pain and our family pain. God hates all that. But God didn't do that. Man did that in the fall. And we've inherited all that pain. And the day you sin, you shall die. Life, to a large degree, involves suffering. We talked about Tom Hanks. Peas and carrots go together, so do suffering and glory. For the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. We just say that. We don't really believe that, do we? But it's true. You never get out of it. It doesn't mean your whole life is going to be suffering. But it does mean God uses suffering in order to accomplish a great, great purpose. But I want to encourage you with something. Jesus, uh, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7, says, In the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things he suffered. Suffered. The Son of God. It was a necessity because he took on our humanity in order for him to suffer. Now that says a lot to me. Jesus says, if they treated me this way, they're going to treat you the same way. You think you're above your master? You're not. You, they, they treated me horribly. You can expect to suffer in this life. Through much tribulation, we must enter the kingdom of God. So we're not going to get out of it. Don't spend your life continuously trying to move the pieces around so that you can avoid suffering. We trust God. We're not going to live in fear. Because what happens? We're like uh, the Jews with the Nazis. Never again. Never again will I be put into that situation. We as Christians, we really can't say that. I don't know what never again means. No, I don't want to suffer. I don't want anything to happen to my children. I don't want bad things to happen. But I'm not going to live in fear. I'm going to sovereignly know that the God who loves me and cares for me and orchestrates everything in my life knows when suffering is appropriate. And so we talked about praising God in the midst of it. The secret to starting this process is to praise God because of the glory that's coming. But we also talked about the fact he knows our limit. Just like Jesus, when he was in the garden, God sent an angel to strengthen him. He knew what his son needed. He knew the limit to his strength, to his humanity. God knows how much you can take. He's not going to put more on you than that. And in the middle of that, he's going to carry you through. He's going to get you to the place that he wants you to be where the glory comes through and you experience with him this not a valley but a summit of suffering to get to what? From suffering to glory. We're saved for glorification. That's our end goal. We will be glorified with him in this new body the end of sin, the end of all that it does, the end of pain, the end of tears. But in order to appreciate it to its maximum, we go through the summit of suffering. And in that process, we experience God in a way we never could if we had no troubles in our life.
God bless you as you go through this process of suffering.